What's going on YouTube? So with how Fire Pokemon have performed in these challenge runs so far, I want to try my hand with who I think will be the best of the bunch. Charizard. Looking at Charizard's stats, overall they're pretty balanced since it's a starter Pokemon, and it has the highest speed stat of the starters at base 100, which is great because there won't be too many things that outspeed us. It has a 534 base stat total, 21 lower than Arcanine's. It's 85 special and 84 attack, although not as good as Arcanine's, are still good enough, and it's more than made up for by its move pool. We get access to Flamethrower by level up and a wide variety of TMs, including TM03 Sword Stance, which we'll need for some badge boosting later on. We could also abuse the Toxic Fire Spin strats if we wanted, but that won't be necessary for this run. We get some other powerful attacks like Body Slam and Earthquake, which will definitely come in handy. And we're part of the Medium Slow Level Up group, as opposed to the Slow Level Up group like Arcanine. With all that being said, I expect Charizard to be the best of the bunch, although there is another Pokemon that could give it a run for its money, possibly. But that's another video for another time. So, why don't we just go ahead and get on with this video. Let's see how Charizard performs in a solo run. So just like with Ninetales and Arcanine, I opt to level up in Viridian Forest some. I fight all the bug catchers because, well, we do super effective damage to them. And we're gonna try Brock here at level 10. Because I know minimum battles won't work on him. And the Geodude comes out, and you're gonna see here, Ember's doing some decent damage. Although Geodude's tackle's doing quite a bit. We want it to use Defense Curl like it is here. And if we could get a Lucky Burn, that would be even better, because that would waste one of Brock's turns of him using a full heal. But we're able to get by the Geodude, no problem. Onyx comes out. We outspeed it, which is great. I know we had a problem outspeeding it with Arcanine. It's going for Screech, don't want to see that, but Bide is what I do want to see. That way we can switch to Leer, and yeah, Bide misses. And we get a lucky burn there, so Brock wastes a turn using a full heal. And one thing I do also is that when Onyx is using all these Screeches, I switch to Growl to cancel out the effect of all of those Screeches, because even though my defense is super lowered, well, Onyx's attack is now going to be lowered as well. And critical hit there is nice. And you'll see we're able to get by Brock on our first try at level 10, although by the end of the battle, we leveled up to level 12. And of course in Mount Moon, we have to take the Dome Fossil. And exiting Mount Moon, we're at a time of 29 minutes. Not bad. Not the worst, and this is a part in the run where I kind of made the first... I don't want to say it's a major mistake, but I feel like it was a pretty big mistake. I'm gonna battle Rival 2 over Misty, because, well, Misty, water attack, super effective. And one of my mistakes is that I don't heal before this battle, and yeah, Pidgeotto has quick attack, it does quite a bit of damage. Ember's doing okay damage, but you'll see here we have 2 HP left, and had it gone for quick attack, we would have been knocked out. Abra, we all know is a free win, and wow, Scratch did a lot there. We can knock it out, but Rattata has quick attack, and it goes for Hyper Fang instead, but yeah, that's a loss to Rival 2. So let's try this again. We heal up this time. And Ember, that's doing about the same damage, and we get hit with a sand attack. And another sand attack. And another sand attack. And now Pidgeotto's going for quick attack, as we still are just missing a bunch. And you'll see here, like, Pidgeotto, it's just spamming sand attack, and we can't hit it to save our life, and we're about to get knocked out by this thing. And there it is, so... I feel like the mistake I made was not picking up Mega Punch. I mean, for this point in the game, it's a pretty strong move. And it, I feel like it would do a lot more damage than Ember would. And this is a point where I thought, should I reset? Maybe pick up Mega Punch? Well, in this battle, Pidgeotto gets a crit quick attack from the get-go. 
you'll see it's doing decent damage, and we're barely able to knock it out once again. Like, we have 16 HP for the remaining Pokemon. So at this point, I was pretty set on maybe resetting the run. Getting the lucky burn there on Rattata definitely helps, and we survive its quick attack barely, but... I mean, all Squirtle has to do is attack us, and we're gonna lose. And there it is. So I got an idea. Instead of resetting the run, I opted to battle the trainers in Misty's gym to get to level 18, then use the two rare candies I found to get to level 20. And I thought, with this extra boost in levels, I should be able to get by Rival 2, and if I can't, I'll reset the run. But you'll see here, three embers did Pidgeotto in, granted one of them was a critical hit. Scratch now one-hits the Abra. Ember critical hit one-shots Rattata. And Squirtle, Scratch, that's doing about a quarter. Bubble, that's not doing too much. And, okay, Water Gun does a lot more, but if we can hit Squirtle, we'll finally be able to get by Rival 2, which we do here. Don't know if the crit mattered or not. But, yeah. Major wall down, and after battling through Nugget Bridge, we can take on Misty. And for this fight, we have a new move on our arsenal in Dig, which is 100 base power, and with it, we're able to knock out the Star You pretty easily. And Star Me, X Defend, we don't want to see that. Dig does about a quarter. Water Gun does a massive damage thanks to the crit. Dig still can't knock it out, and Bubble Beam's gonna knock us out. So, we're gonna try that again. I feel like if Misty doesn't go for that X Defend turn 1, we got this. So, let's try again. We already know that Dig is gonna be a one-hit KO on Star U. But I misclick Ember here and does half, you know, thanks to a crit. But now, I click the right move, dig, and we get another crit. Alright, can we get some of that crit luck against Starmie? No, but we do over half with dig, and we can withstand a bubble beam, and dig knocks out Starmie, so two badges down. We're now going to venture to the SSN and battle this one optional trainer who guards TM08 Body Slam, which we're going to teach right away, and now we can upgrade our 35 base power scratch to an 85 base power move with a 30% chance to paralyze. And we're gonna take on the rival Body Slam. Can't quite one-shot Pidgeotto. It gets off a sand attack, which is annoying, but we hit next turn and take it down. Raticate, we miss not once, but twice. And it's able to get off two tail whips. Quick attack, still doesn't do a lot, but Body Slam one-shots it. Kadabra, we already know Body Slam will be a one-shot. Crit didn't matter. And Wartortle, Body Slam, does over half. Water Gun does decent damage, and those sand attacks didn't really affect us too much. And now we can take on Surge, which, I mean, we have Dig on our moveset, so how tough can he be, really? Voltorb is a one-shot, although I bet Body Slam could have one-shotted as well. Pikachu, same thing. Dig is a one-shot, although Body Slam probably could have got the job done. Raichu, will Dig be a one-shot? It is. Thunderbolt would have done massive damage to us. We are a flying type, after all. Which, you'd think being part flying, the self-destructing hiker would give us a problem. Well, normally yes, but we have Dig. So, Geodude number one self-destructs? Geodude number two is a one-shot with Dig? And Graveler, will it self-destruct while we go underground? It doesn't, it goes for Rock Throw, but Dig's a one-shot. Alright, and we can make our way to Lavender and face Rival 4, which I actually had to redo this battle because my footage of it got corrupted and had to reset and go through Rock Tunnel again, which kind of sucked, but as you see, Body Slam was able to one-shot both the Pidgeotto and the Growlithe. Execute Ember... It barely hangs on. That kind of surprises me because both Ninetales and Arcanine, I believe, were able to knock it out in one shot with Ember. A follow-up Ember knocks it out. Kadabra, Body Slam. Oh, we miss. Okay, there's a 1 in 256 glitch. But we're able to knock it out with the next one. 
and War Turtle, Body Slam, Critical Hit, and we paralyze it. I'll take that. So we're cruising now through the mid game, and we can make our way to Celadon, where next we are going to battle Erica. Now, I've learned don't go into this battle poisoned. I've learned a lot from the past fire type runs, and I'm going to utilize it in this run. And in the next fire type that will come following Charizard. But to the battle. Dig can't quite one shot Victory Bell. It's able to poison us. It misses with Rap because we're underground. And Dig still can't knock it out. Erica uses a retroactive super potion. I try Body Slam. It can't knock it out. And now we're stuck in the combo of Poison and Rap. So just on the first Pokemon, we are down. To 29 HP before we are able to knock out Victory Bell. Although we do get a little boost from leveling up. Body Slam can't knock out the Tangela. It is more... It is more a defensive Pokemon. Two Body Slams takes it out. And now Vile Plume, Body Slam, we paralyze it. It goes for Petal Dance. And okay, that does 6 HP. Body Slam can't knock it out. And... It does another 6 HP. We're able to survive on 2 HP and win. So let's wrap up our business in Celadon by taking on Giovanni. Dig should be enough to one-shot the Onyx. I mean, we are 10 levels higher. And it is. Great. So since Onyx was a one-shot, that means Dig should also one-shot the Rhyhorn. And it does. Great. Alright, so Kangaskhan. Let's switch to Body Slam. That's doing about a third... And yeah, it's going to be a 3-hit KO, and yeah, Giovanni, easy as always. With the Sylph Scope in hand, we can wrap up Pokemon Tower, then head to Sylph Co., which we can then pick up a few TMs here. The first being TM03, Swords Dance, which we're going to use for badge boosting purposes, and the second being TM26, Earthquake. And then we're going to battle Rival Fievel. I've added both Sword Stance and Earthquake to my moveset here. I'm going to set up one Sword Stance. Pidgeot goes for Whirlwind. I set up another, and there's Sand Attack. Don't want to see that, but Body Slam is able to one-shot it. Awesome. Earthquake, it's going to one-shot Growlithe. It's a terrible Pokemon. Execute. Since we've boosted our attack, let's see how much Earthquake does. Not quite enough to knock it out. Thankfully, it misses Hypnosis, and we hit Body Slam. Alakazam, Body Slam, or Earthquake will knock it out, but that Sand Attack is starting to come back to haunt us, and it's able to get off two Confusions before we're able to one-shot it. Blastoise is last. As long as we hit, which we do, we Critical Hit, so we don't knock it out. Critical Hits ignore your Batch Boost, but the second is able to knock it out. And let's go ahead and take care of Giovanni. Which you'll know, he is no challenge in any of these runs. Earthquake is super effective and one-shots Nidorino. Against Kangaskhan, I'm going to take the time here. I'm going to use one Body Slam. And I decide to set up not one, not two, but three Sword Stance. Just to make sure I really sweep through the rest of his Pokemon. Comet Punch is annoying here because it does get a 5-hit uh, turn. Body Slam, though, knocks it out. Rhyhorn, we already know Earthquake, even without all of the Sword Stance, would knock it out. And Nido Queen, I feel like we would have needed at least one Sword Stance, but with three, we're able to knock it out pretty easy. And while in Saffron, let's wrap up business. We're going to go ahead and take on Sabrina next. And her Pokemon have Frail Defenses. And we have an okay special stat, but I still expect that we should one-shot all of her Pokemon. Against Kadabra, that's exactly what Earthquake is going to do here, and down in one shot. Mr. Mime is the Pokemon I want to set up against. It goes for Barrier after I set up a Sword Stance, which, not the best. Earthquake can't knock it out because of that, but it goes for Light Screen next and we knock it out next turn. Venomoth, I should have just went for Earthquake again, but I switched to Body Slam. That knocks it out. Alakazam actually outspeeds and goes for Reflect, so Earthquake can't knock it out, but a second Reflect, she hands us the battle. And now we're going to make our way to Fuchsia City, which 
This battle against Koga, yeah, it's not very challenging. All you have to do is hit A on Earthquake. That's it. Maybe set up one sword dance, but Earthquake makes this battle just a cakewalk, especially, you know, because we outlevel everything. The Muck is able to withstand an Earthquake, but Koga just uses an X attack and it goes down the next turn. Coughing number two. Yeah, we saw this with Coughing number one, Earthquake one shots. But Weezing is the bulkiest Pokemon. How much will Earthquake do? Little over half, it misses Smog, and yeah, there goes the battle. And just like Koga, Blaine is really no exception. Just hit A on Earthquake. His fire types are no match for our almighty dragon. I go ahead and set up a sword stance on the Growlithe, though, just because I don't know if Earthquake would one-shot the Arcanine. But, yeah, Earthquake, one-shots Ponyta. Earthquake will one-shot the Rapidash. And now the moment of truth. Arcanine, will it be a one-shot? And... It is. So that's seven gym badges down. And let's go ahead and make it eight. But one thing that we do get here, Fire Blast. While it is the most powerful fire move that Charizard learns, we get Flamethrower later, which is a lot more accurate. Anyways, I go ahead and set up a Sword Stance on the Rhyhorn here for the Giovanni fight. And Earthquake... There's a one-shot. Doug Trio only has one move that can hit us, but Body Slam is enough to take it out in its frail defenses. Earthquake. It one-shots the Nidoqueen. Okay. We gain a level, but we still have our bat or our boosted attack stat. We one-shot Nidoking. Ride on. Not sure if we'll one-shot it. We don't. But that's okay, we can just finish it with Flamethrower next turn. And we're 17 minutes into this video, about to take on Rival 6. Not to mention, 2 hours 55 minutes in-game time, Charizard's making great time and is poised to beat Ninetales and Arcanine by over 2 hours. So let's see if we can keep it going. Flamethrower, not quite enough to one-shot Pidgeot, but a second one takes it out. Against the Rhyhorn, I'm going to set up Swords Dance because there's really nothing it can do to me. It could go for Tail Whip, which would badge boost me further. Fury Attack, which is probably the most annoying of its moves, just because it takes forever. But Earthquake is going to go ahead and knock it out. I'm going to set up one last Sword Dance on Growlithe. It goes for Agility. We still outspeed, though. Earthquake, one shot. Execute. Flamethrower will cook these eggs. And against the Alakazam, as long as we outspeed, which we do, we one-shot. Alright. Now how much will Earthquake do to Blastoise? The answer? All of its HP. Rival 6. No problem for Charizard. And we're at 3 hours 17 minutes in front of Lorelei's chamber. I think Charizard's probably gonna finish around 3 hours 30 minutes. It's making great time. But my luck runs out, which you'll see in full fashion in this first Lorelei battle. I go ahead and set up Sword Stance on Dugong. Aurora Beam gets a massive critical hit and lowers my attack. Earthquake, yeah, that's doing half, and Growl lowers my attack again, so my Sword Stance, you know, is nullified. And at this point, you know, it's just trading Earthquakes and Super Potions. Can I knock out the Cloister with all the badge boosts? I can't, and yeah, it's time to reset. So, let's go ahead and use some Rare Candies before this battle. With some Rare Candies, we should be able to overpower Dugong and Cloister pretty easily. I'm not worried about the other Pokémon, although... A Hydro Pump from Lapras could be dead. Future D1D here. I needed to fill this silent gap, so like, comment, subscribe. So we're going to go ahead and use all of our rare candies, except for one, because I want to save it for 
either before or after Lance. I also debated about teaching Fire Blast or even Fire Spin for this battle, because it could have come in handy. I mean, Fire Blast does pack more of a punch than Flamethrower. You'll see how useless Fire Spin was a bit later. Once again, against the Dugong, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a Swords Dance. Aurora Beam, with no crit, that's doing a lot less, but we still get an attack drop. Dugong goes for rest the second turn, and with three attack boosts, Earthquake can knock it out. Alright. Now let's see how much Flamethrower does. It crits. Might have mattered. That's a one shot on Cloyster. Slow bro. I'm gonna go ahead and set up Swords Dance because it's just going to spam withdraw, and Water Gun can't do much unless it sets up amnesias. Two Earthquakes is enough to knock it out. Jinx has very frail defense. I opt for Flamethrower, and that still one-shots it. Lapras is last. Can Earthquake knock it out with our boosted attack? It can. Alright, so one member of the Elite Four down on our second try. And we know that Bruno is simple. All we're going to have to do is hit A on Earthquake. Maybe set up Sword Stance. And you'll see in this battle, that's exactly what we do. Minus the Sword Stance part. Onyx number one, Earthquake, and yep, one shot. I don't think the crit mattered. Against Hitmonchan though, I switched to Flamethrower just because I don't want to see counter, and we're able to one shot it. Hitmonlee, Body Slam, it actually hangs on, hits me with a jump kick, and Flamethrower finishes it off. Onyx number two, I go ahead and set up a sword stance here. It hits me with rock throw, and yeah, that four times weakness to rock, I almost lose to Bruno here. Surprise, surprise, but Earthquake with a boosted sword stance is able to knock it out. It almost knocks out Machamp. Thankfully, it just goes for focus energy. Had it used maybe submission, I could have lost, but it doesn't. And next up, we have Agatha, who normally is a problem, but... We have a ground move, and her ghost Pokemon have very frail defense, and for the one Pokemon we can't hit with Earthquake and Golbat, we have Flamethrower and Body Slam for it, so... Yeah, this battle, no problem. Earthquake? Will one-shot Gengar number one? Golbat comes out, I opt for Flamethrower on it, we get a lucky burn which is nice, and it misses Super Sonic. Had it gone for Confuse Ray, that probably would have been worse. But, two down. Haunter has worse defense than both Gengars, so Earthquake will one-shot it. Three down. Arbok has similar stats to Golbat, but I think slightly worse. And four down. And Gengar number two. Earthquake. And one-shot. So, everything a one-shot except for Golbat, which, I mean, could we hit it with Earthquake? It would have been a one-shot. But now we have Fire Pokemon's biggest problem. Lance. Ninetales is the only fire type to post a winning record against Lance so far. Will Charizard be able to do the same, or will Lance put this flame out? And one of the biggest things of the Lance battles I've noticed is we need some big luck with Hydro Pump. A crit will definitely one-shot us. But anyways, Gyarados comes out. I use Body Slam. It does over half thanks to the crit. We paralyze it. Hydro Pump hits and... We're down to 30 HP. We can't knock it out. Wow, that barely did anything. I opt to try a Swords Dance and Body Slam again. Another crit and another fully paralyzed. We get by the Gyarados, but we don't have any HP left for any of the other Pokemon. Earthquake one-shot Dragonair number one. So it should one-shot Dragonair number two. But now we have Aerodactyl. We outspeed it. We're doing about... A third, and Hyper Beam just knocks us out. And in case you were wondering, I did try a battle against Lance where I put Fire Spin on my moveset as opposed to Flamethrower or Fire Blast. It doesn't really do much. It didn't really help. Fire Spin has trash accuracy, and you see how little it's doing to Gyarados, and... Yeah, this battle was essentially a wash as well. I mean, we don't even do half damage to Gyarados, and... It would take some extreme luck to get by with just Fire Spin. And that was actually battle number three against Lance. I'm not going to bother showing battle two because it went similar to battle one. But I have Fire Blast on my moveset for this attempt. 
It looks like a 5 hit KO and we get lucky with a Hydro Pump miss and we paralyze with our first Body Slam, a crit we're able to knock it out on the next one. So against Dragonair number 1, I can go ahead and set up Sword Stance. It goes for Hyper Beam so it has to recharge. Two Sword Stance, I'm just going to go for Earthquake right away. We take it out, Dragonair number 2, Earthquake, and that's also a one shot. But now we have Aerodactyl. This is why I added Fire Blast. The extra punch does over half, and we burn it. So, had it gone for an attacking move, it would have been severely weakened, and we've made it to Dragonite. Body Slam almost KOs it, and its slam can't do a lot of damage, so we finally made it by Lance. Charizard is 1 in 3 against Lance. Not as good as Ninetales 2 in 1. And not as atrocious as Arcanine's 3 and, let's just call it, 30 losses. But we have Champion next. And the Champion's Blastoise could pose a problem. But let's see if Charizard can get by him on his first attempt. I sure hope so. I think it would be a first for any fire types on the channel if he did. Against the Pidgeot, I'm going to go ahead and set up one Sword Stance. Pidgeot starts glowing, it's going to go for Sky Attack. Fire Blast, come on, we need a one-shot here. We don't get it, Sky Attack, and that does some pretty good damage. Body Slam knocks out the next turn. Against Alakazam, I know that either Earthquake or Body Slam will knock it out. And we do here, so that's two down. Rhydon... I'm going to go ahead and set up the final two Swords Dance, because we're definitely going to need them for Blastoise. Rhydon cooperates. It goes for a Leer to badge boost us further. Earthquake. Can't quite knock it out because of the crit, but Tail Whip. There's another badge boost. Body Slam just knocks it out. Arcanine. Earthquake. We know that's going to be a one-shot. And it is. Alright, four down. Executor, we just need Fire Blast to hit, okay? And we knock it out. Alright, so we've made it to Blastoise. Don't get a crit on Earthquake. For the love of God, don't get a crit on Earthquake. Let's go. We did it. On the first attempt. Way to go, Charizard. And Charizard, by far, gets the best time for a Fire Pokemon thus far on the channel. And it makes me wonder, how will other fire types like Magmar, Flareon, Moltres, and Rapidash fare? Well, if you saw the clip from Volcanic Panic earlier in the video, you know that I want to do Magmar next. But seeing that next month is December, and that's usually when the snow comes, we're going to be doing some ice Pokemon. But anyways, Charizard finishes at level 64, with a final time of 3 hours 35 minutes. The best time thus far by a fire Pokemon. 5 minutes slower than Gengar, but almost 2 hours faster than both Ninetales and Arcanine. I think it deserves a place in the same tier as Victory. Battle. And now the question is, do you think Charizard can post the best time from the starters? How do you think Blastoise and Venusaur would fare? Well, what if I told you I've already done those runs and I just need to edit and do the voiceovers of them? Only I know the answer as to which one has posted the best time so far. But as far as how Blastoise and Venusaur did? Well, you're just gonna have to wait till probably 2023 to find out. Anyways, thank you so much for the continued support on the channel. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And until the next video, see you later.